Good afternoon, everybody, uh, and good morning, good evening to some of our international guests today. Welcome to the continuation of the ASCG webinar series hosted by the ACT branch. I'm Mike Barlow, the treasurer for the ACT branch. And today we are very <coughs> pleased to have uh, Simon van der Wielen talking to you about Geoscience Australia's new geophysical archive and data delivery system, GADS 2.0. Before we continue, uh, I'd just like to mention that we are streaming live from Southern Canberra, and I would like to acknowledge the Ngunnawal people as the traditional owners of this land on which we meet, and, my, and I pay my respects, and we pay our respects to their elders past and present. All of these webinars would not be possible through the ASCG without our Corporate Plus and Corporate sponsors, including High Size, Total Seismic, Veldsize, Southern Geoscience, Santos, Transparent Earth Geophysics, and Doog. <clears throat> Similarly, we have a number of state sponsors as well that <clears throat> keep the branches alive and keep those meetings flowing, including uh, corporate sponsors in South Australia, Northern Territory, WA, New South Wales. And unfortunately, at this stage, we have no ACT sponsors, but uh, please put your hands up if you would like to uh, help us continue to deliver these webinars from the ACT. Okay, housekeeping and Zoom etiquette. If you have a question, and I hope there will be lots of questions, hover over your control panel and click on the Q&A function to let the moderator know if you have a question. Type, type your question in the box, the moderator will see it, and uh, we'll put these questions to Simon at the end of the presentation. Also, just to let you know of upcoming webinars on Wednesday, the 16th of December, 3 p.m., we have Ain Nadra Noor Sazali talking on the efficient exploration in the Bonaparte Basin using unstructured data and analytics with elastic docks. Uh, similarly, Tuesday, 2nd of February, we have another talk by Dr. Mehdi Talk Kashkai. And on Tuesday, 16th of February, another talk has been organised by Dr. Kate Selway. <clears throat> okay, and a little bit of marketing blurb here for the ACG. No, don't, no doubt most of you are members already and you know the benefits, including free access to exploration geophysics, free copy of preview, reduced entry to AGC conference coming up uh, late next year, free entry to regular technical events in your state, access to job advertisements, access to the annual wine offer, social events on, in your state, and obviously that opportunity to foster professional network, connect with a generous professional network with wide experience, research funding, travel scholarships for students, and free membership for students and half price for retirees. Good. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Simon Simon is a data scientist who spent 10 years with Geoscience Australia and has extensive experience in data modelling, mineral potential mapping, geophysical and geochemical modelling, and has been instrumental in the development of the new GADS 2.0. So without further ado, I'll hand over to, to Simon. Thank you, Simon. Thanks, Mike. I'm just going to share my screen, so hopefully this won't take long and start the presentation mode. All right, thanks Mike for the introduction. Um, so Geoscience Australia has been delivering uh, uh, geophysical data for um, quite some time. Uh, we've, the old GAD systems was uh, uh, actually implemented in the early 2000s and it's basically, uh, it's basically 20 years old, old now. Um, and uh, over the last few years, we've been sort of modernising the way we've uh, delivered uh, um, our geophysical data as part of the GADS upgrade. Um, this presentation, I'm going to give you just an overview of the GAD system and the benefits of the, the new GAD system compared to the old, old one. And then I'm going to go to a live demo uh, and then basically uh, a few slides on where we're heading uh, uh, with the GADS in the next basically 12 months. 
So the old GAD system was, was uh, worked uh, very well for many years. Um, however, um, it had a few issues. It was uh, based on proprietary format and ap applications. It had incomplete metadata, uh, mean, which means that it was uh, uh, essentially you only could do a really a spatial search on uh, of the on the GIFA school surveys you're after, and it was on basically old internal GA infrastructure that has been unreliable and out of warranty for, um, for over a decade. Um, the new GAD system is based on a net CDF. Uh, uh, open data format. Uh, again, so this is uh, uh, basically a major improve, uh, basically improvement. It's uh, uh, file sizes are considerably smaller than the uh, text-based files that we're um, using. Uh, uh, the gridded data is also available as uh, um, web services, as uh, WMS and WCS web services. Again, this means that uh, modern uh, GIS uh, platforms can uh, uh, use, use the data in, in, in an automated way. Uh, we've also developed uh, basically a GADS API written in Python, which again is scalable. Um, the, uh, uh, we've also created a new uh, geospatial survey metadata uh, data database and web service. Again, so for, uh, and this is delivered through um, uh, AWS. And uh, we've also successfully remediated uh, our archive of uh, over uh, 4,500 uh, um, uh, uh, data sets and we've also uh, added another 350 new data sets to the uh, GAD system. Um, GAD 2.0 is using the national computer infrastructure in Australia and uh, uh, for basically data archiving and access to the data and also um, uh, Amazon Web Services for the cloud infrastructure and the data processing in, in the portal. Um, uh, it's also it's got a basically a modern web portal and user interface, which I'll show you um, later. Okay, so this is a bit of a uh, data flow diagram. So it's basically quite sim simplified. So again, so if we got the um, uh, net CDF data and the web services based at the uh, NCI, um, we're using a uh, basically Amazon Web web services uh, with for the GATS API and the portal and uh, the uh, see the GIF school metadata web service and uh, uh, the GATS system uh, users will get a basically a download email and, but there's also direct access to the data via, via the portal as well which I'll explain later all right so um, this is uh, just a slide before I go on to the uh, live demo. Uh, again, so we've also created a basically a, a, basically a user guide, and uh, this is the basically the URL link to the um, portal. If people have bookmarked the old GADS, um, the GADS uh, um, uh, portal, uh, that will now redirect to the, the, the new version. All right. So. Um, so this is the uh, GADS, um, uh, basically uh, the GADS basically uh, portal. It's uh, based on the GA uh, um, uh, portal technology, uh, and it's essentially a, a basically a, uh, uh, actually a, what we call a persona within within the portal. So it's like a, a customized uh, view of of the portal, the GA portal. Um, I'm just going. So when people first go to the uh, um, the um, the portal, this is what they uh, appears uh, so if people can have direct access to the um the, the gads api there but i'm just going to show you an overview of what's actually in 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 the portal so we've got uh, some about text uh, which explains what what the basic persona in this portal is about um we have a basic layers panel here which you can add um, basically different data sets to the map uh location search access to um, uh, particular data and publications that have been curated for the um, GADS uh, persona, a series of tools, uh, uh, basically uh, things like uh, the GADS system itself and then a few other um, uh, basic tools that are available th through the tools panel. Um, uh, we got uh, basically um, uh, various uh, zoom buttons here. We've got a 3D view uh, as well, uh, although we've uh, disabled this for the, um, the, the GADS persona. We've got share map function, help function, and then this uh, persona, which can you switch from different uh, um, uh, basic uh, versions of the portal. So I'm just going to show you some of the features of the, um, sort of the, the, the basic GADS data sets in the portal. So first of all, I'm going to uh, uh, just search for a particular survey. 
Uh, if I spelled that right. So uh, again, so this gives you a layer. So again, the layer panel here has got access to about uh, four and a half thousand different uh, layers. So um, you can browse the catalog or search for particular um, uh, names. So I'm just going to add this to the map and zoom into that survey. Um, so this is uh, one of the uh, basically uh, um, old uh, um, uh, GADS datasets again. So the benefit of uh, having uh, basically at the NCI, we have basically threads web surfaces as part of, as part of it. Uh, we can uh, change the color ramp. And then also change the um, uh, min max values. So this is uh, done on the fly. So what I've done here is I've just extracted out some some of the features of that survey. We can do uh, add an, actually another survey here as well. Just going to similar thing. And uh, again, so if, uh, there's basically a legend here that's uh, sort of auto calculated, so you've got access to the actual um, the basic values. Uh, we've got some about text. Uh, uh, if the users want to actually download that particular uh, data set, for instance, we can then uh, basically, uh, have a, we've got an option for, to uh, download it from the layers panel using the WCS uh, format. And that will automatically download that particular data set. As you can see here, um, you've got the basic the base image there. Uh, we give the, in this particular download option, we give the options of the uh, GTF, floating GTF, and next uh, CDF format. People also have the ability to uh, copy the WMS link. So this is quite a useful uh, um, uh, basic function. So people can then copy that directly into their GIS package and uh, basically transparency. So. Uh, we also got a lot of the of the, of the basic uh, gravity data sets in here, so I'm just going to uh, load that in one of the basic uh, um, the Woomer uh, survey as well. As with the um, um, sort of the basic magnetic images, we can actually change the color ramp. So I'm just going to choose a basically a red blue color ramp to display the gravity and uh, change the uh, min max range. So again, so if this gives the people a first pass uh, look at the different data sets. Uh, so again, so for this area of highlighted uh, because these surveys are, uh, occur over over basically Olympic Dam, and this essentially here is the uh, um, basically the uh, um, one of the basic prospects near uh, uh, um, Olympic Dam. So uh, so we've got got. Uh, I'm just going to refresh the screen now. Um, so that's access to the underlying data. Uh, we also have uh, the ability to um, basically display um, uh, the basic the um, the survey metadata web service as well. So I'm just going to change the base map to something that's a, a bit uh, yeah. So uh, basically change the base map here, and then we'll just load in the uh, basic the, the data the data set um, meta survey data sets web service. So, with the, basically the, uh, the survey data sets, we, uh, web service, we can actually uh, apply filters on the fly as well. So, at the moment, this is uh, basically showing you the um, all uh, basically 7,000 surveys in, in, in the GAD system. Uh, for instance, if I'm after a particular uh, um, basic gravity, uh, we can actually apply, apply a filter and that just will then just show you the basic gravity data sets, but we can go a bit further than that. So, for instance, if I'm just after the Gridded data, and I want a particular um, design after the um, basically the um, survey data rather than the national grids. So we can apply a filter, and that sort of brings it down. But again, so we've got these ser series of filters here that uh, people it gives people um, access to it. So if, um, particularly after the, um, the sub Australian data set, so we can actually then just look at the state data as well. 
So these filters are calculated on the fly by querying the, um, the web service. Um, we can then also click on the actual uh, polygons to bring up some more information about the survey. And that gives you the, basically the link to the, uh, where it occurs on the NCI or also gives the basic uh, general metadata information when the survey was uh, uh, acquired, uh, who's the owner of the data set, who basically was the contractor, um, when it was, and the basic longs of the, uh, of the, um, the sur survey bounds and also uh, states in spatial as, as well. So yeah, it's quite extensive for uh, metadata. So this has took quite a while to actually uh, uh, go back through all the old uh, um, survey processing reports to actually capture this information. Uh, we also give the option uh, uh, for people to download the, the uh, metadata as well. So if people go to the, uh, uh, the about uh, section, uh, they can copy the WMS link, but uh, we also uh, uh, provide an option to download that, that as uh, in CSV, JSON, KML, shape, shape file format. Again, the benefit of the of this is that uh, uh, these web services are dynamic. So once we've added more data into the um, the um, um, web surface are automatically updated. All right, so I'm just going to move on to, I'm just going to clear before I do that, just clear, move away from active layers. Uh, and now I'm just going to uh, show how the uh, actual the GADS tool itself works. So again, with the old GAD system, we have have ability to do a basically spatial search. Uh, we've extended the functionality, so um, there, we give the use of ability to draw a basic polygon or sort of a, uh, or various bounding boxes. Uh, we've got basically manual, manual entry here. People can even load files, so this is quite uh, useful. So if people have like a, a tenement shape file, they want to just click that, get the uh, geophysical data for. If we, we can use that. There's a state. Um, state option as well and then also the uh, quarter million map sheet so i'm just going to choose the uh, manual option and here right so uh, the uh, gads uh, uh, user interfaces uh, separate into um, basically the spatial search, the basically primary filters, and an option of filters. So again, if I'm after um, sort of the uh, uh, graphy data, for instance, we can select that here. And uh, again, so if I want uh, the the gridded data data only, uh, we do have uh, created a new, another. Um, type of data is image. So this is like a, a basically R RGB image uh, data, data set as well. Always uh, we've got line, which is basically flight lines and then point point data as well. Um, and I just want to have the uh, individual surveys. Uh, we also uh, have in the primary field this option to uh, uh, put a survey range. So if you if, if users only want the basically latest surveys, they can basically uh, use these sliders to uh, change change the parameters here. And I'll just run the query. So that's brought back um, basically uh, uh, basically six results. Um, we have some summary information here. So again, so the basically um, survey ID, the basic method of uh, the uh, we say this is the case so I've only selected gravity data, uh, um, basically the basic grid data, and also the line, line spacing here, and then the data set uh, name. Uh, we're offering uh, basically a couple of options. So if people, uh, people want to uh, click on particular um, basic surveys, for, for instance, so if they've uh, you've polygon shows, so the region of interest will uh, basically clip that uh, um, survey to your bounding box. But if uh, the users decide they only want the want, want the entire data set, uh, we give them an option to yeah download the entire data set. Um, as well. The other thing, a bit different than the old GAD system, if you click on the actual um, data sets, it brings up the, um, the basic full metadata record as well. So people can uh, uh, actually go into a bit more detail if they want to actually uh, 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 choose to download that data set or not. 
Um, the other thing I forgot to mention uh, before is we also have the help function here. So if that will bring up the uh, the, um, the user guide for the GAD system. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to uh, select a few data sets to actually download. Um, again, so the, basically the grid options. So we have here uh, the option of uh, choosing an uh, ER mapper or GeoTIFF. Uh, if people don't like, want the um, default cell size, uh, they can enter their own um, basically, uh, basically cell size, and then we give them an option of uh, basically what uh, uh, resampling method to use. So I can choose cubic spline. Um, because I haven't chosen uh, any point of line that these options have been disab disabled for this particular search. Um, and then again, with the old GAD system, people can choose the projection they would like the data in and type the email address in and submit job. So again, it's roughly straightforward. The other option we do have with uh, the GAD system is uh, people can uh, uh, basically save their um, uh, basic query. So I'll just show you that function. So, uh, and then they can actually manually and uh, basically edit that or or um, uh, basically basically save it for another time. So so again, sort of it gives a fair bit of flexibility. So that's sort of the uh, will uh, so you'll get to basically once that's actually pr uh, processed, uh, depending on the area area of the basic area of in interest, it can take. Uh, uh, a few hours, but it's from the testing we've done, it's uh, significantly faster than the old, old GAD system. Uh, users will get a, a, a basic email uh, showing uh, with the basic download link. So I'll just show you an example of one here. So again, so that uh, basically shows you the basic size of the uh, uh, of the zip file file that downloads. Uh, it also uh, shows you the area of interest that you've uh, ch chosen, what the method the geophysical method was um, a basically data set type and then also a list of the data sets in here uh, and this is the download link that uh, you click to uh, basically download the package. Uh, we've also got the basically uh, the license agreements in, in this email and then if there's any issues uh, basically access to our client services so you can help uh, troubleshoot uh, with, uh, with users. Um, if for any reason that the uh, the um, the 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 basically the GADS APIs failed. Uh, you'll get an email notification and the reasons why. So I'm just going to refine search and do another search. So um, what I'll do is want to now want to basically mag data for that particular area, and I'm essentially after the line data, not the um, the gridded data, and. So I'm just going to run that query. So that's brought back uh, 33 um, basically, um, uh, basically uh, re results. Uh, again, sort of uh, uh, at this stage, we've we've restricted the um, the basic GADs to a 20, 20 data sets. So there's a few ways of of actually uh, uh, refining that search so people can turn on the individual uh, service as I showed before, but uh, we, they can also basically apply, um, uh, uh, re refine the actual uh, basic search by using the, the optional filters. So, um, so for instance, if I want to uh, go to line spacing now, so I want to uh, basically choose a line spacing that's uh, less than uh, basically 300 and see what happens. And run query. And that's basically uh, reduced it to um, basically 10, 10 results. Um, again, so if the users got the ability to click on the individual surveys to see where they are located in, in, in your uh, basic region. So again, that one's outside the bounding box side, so I don't, don't really want that. And again, with that one, that's sort of just touching it. As with the, um, the gravity data sets, if you click on the individual surveys, you get the full metadata um, records showing. 
uh, again, so this is the uh, um, the one of the newer newer data sets that we're in the process of actually uploading to um, the NCI. Um, again, so if, uh, yeah, it's basically gives you a, basically quite a detailed um, uh, description of the that survey. So I'm just going to close that. And uh, again, so the um, uh, with the basic different options. So at the moment, we've uh, we, we've reporting line data. We're supporting the ASEG GDF two and the Net CDF format. And I'll just decide that I want it in ASEG GDF two, and then I'll also just want uh, in the same the same fifty three, and then I can just submit the job. So the other thing I mentioned previously is the help documentation. So we've got this uh, help icon here. If you if you just click on that, that takes them to a basic PDF uh, report, uh, basically describing how people can uh, basically use the um, the GAD system. Um, all right. So I'm just going to go back to my uh, um, basic uh, PowerPoint presentation now. So the um, next phase of the GADS uh, redevelopment, uh, we're uh, um, uh, planning uh, over the next 12 months uh, sort of uh, continue the development of, of the GAD system. So there's quite a few things that we have uh, have work in the pipeline. One of the main things is actually um, basically standardizing property names and unit of measure. This is one of the uh, probably key um, uh, uh, things in the next phase of the, of the GADS uh, because it gives uh, uh, people the ability to then uh, uh, basically do machine to machine uh, reading of the data sets without much ma manual uh, uh, checking. So again, that's sort of uh, going to be a quite a quite an advancement on the uh, old, old GAD system. Uh, uh, we're also expanding the number of basically file formats that we're planning on supporting, uh, including uh, NV, ERDAS, uh, and ASCII grid format. Uh, we're also going to uh, basically support the new uh, uh, GDA 2020 uh, projection and increase the, um, the basically difficult methods support. So again, we've been acquiring a lot of uh, basically airborne gravity over recent years, and we're planning on uh, 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 delivering that through the GAD system. Um, Include and other other data sets include uh, the airborne gravity and and also the inversion models. I might just go to my last slide, which is questions. Um, so, thank you, thank you very much, Simon. Yep. Look, uh, th there are a few questions here, and uh, obviously, it's the audience is more than welcome to ask questions using the audio. But look. Um, one question that's come up here is in terms of uh, seeing available surveys, can you zoom in on the map and see what surveys are available? Uh, in terms of actually displaying on the map, we, yeah, we're planning on the next phase of the de development is once you select an area, those surveys will actually show up rather than just a pure bounding box but at this stage we just uh, uh, yeah keeping it a bit simple just uh, having the basically the actual um uh, the basic uh, the basic so about out polygon outlines of these surveys okay and there's another question here about the availability of the data through G sky uh, G sky I'm not familiar with that uh, Mike so that potentially is my pre answer to that so so I'm not, yeah, so that's probably a question for the geophysics team, I think. So. Uh, okay, and uh, a question through the Q&A. Look, there was um, a point here about how up-to-date or how frequently updated is the new GADS data set? And perhaps you'd just like to make a comment there about how yep. quickly we can update it under the new system. Yep. So. Um, there's a few, a few things. So we've in the process of uh, basically uh, uploading uh, 350 new data sets into the, the system. We were hoping it was going to be ready um, uh, for this release, but uh, it looks like it's going to be basically two, two weeks to a month month away before those data sets are available. Um, 
the plan is to uh, basically automate this uh, basically pipeline to make it uh, getting data sets out within sort of uh, basically a week to uh, two weeks to a month after the uh, uh, yeah so basically making it quite yeah as fast as possible by automating the uh, um, process so that's probably part of the uh, the GATS 2.1 uh, 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 work plan. So it's been quite a big task over the last sort of uh, basically two, three years to actually uh, yeah migrate all the data into um, over to the NCI and do all the basic uh, remediation. It's yeah, been a fair bit of effort from the Mike's team and also okay. the informatics team at GA. Okay. Another question from Anonymous. Is the API documented and available for use by the public? I believe so. I think that's um, uh, on uh, on on GitHub, uh, I will double check that and uh, basically I'll respond to that user, but I believe that it is, so potentially was a, um, a, a, a basically state survey, for instance, could probably use that uh, as a, a delivering mechanism for their own, own data as well. Okay, and uh, a little bit of praise here from one of our Vict uh, Tasmanian friends. Yeah. This is brilliant. Is there any lower limit on the size of surveys supported, e.g. the smallest commercial expiration postage stamp? And I assume this is for windowing data. Uh, again, so at this stage, we've got a lot of the state's uh, survey data. We don't generally uh, have many uh, um, company surveys in it, but again, that's something that we could look at uh, delivering through the system if there's interest. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, anonymous again. Current requests have resulted in failure requests when asking for data, not grids. Um, yeah. So, it, it, is there has there been some sort of systematic issue with? Uh, delivery failure has that been resolved? Yep. Uh, so there's a, probably a few comments there. So the system's been uh, actually um, undeveloped, under basically developing beta testing for uh, a few months, and then if we identify issues, we tend to fix them in, within the within a week. One of the main issues at the moment is a lot of the new data sets are in our um, uh, basically metadata web service, but they're not actually on the NCI as yet, and that may cause a, a f f failure email to be notification. But if anyone has any issues like that, uh, please just contact client service and we'll uh, help, help you troubleshoot the issues. Okay, and you may have mentioned this, but is there a download limit on data or the number of uh, surveys you can download at any one time? Uh, yes, so we've limited it to 20 at this stage. Um, so the system's been designed to be scalable. So uh, again, so if, uh, I've, we've a bit mindful of if uh, we'll have some users that decide to download all the data in Australia and then you end up with a terabytes in a zip file. <laughs> so that's sort of, again, so if, uh, uh, yeah, we're trying to minimize that um, uh, uh, over ambitious users to, at this stage. Okay, so partly related, that's that limits the number of data sets you can download. But is there also a gigabyte limit on how you can down, how much you can download? I've tested this on the um, on the national grids, the forty meter national grid, and was able to download the um, uh, the, the entire uh, national grid data set through the system. So, so that that was probably about I think from memory about fourteen gigabytes. Or maybe 17 gigabytes. Okay, all right. And look, I, I have a question for you. The, the in all of the remediation that's gone on between GADS two and the old GADS, have have we lost any data sets that we can deliver? Uh, some of the uh, uh, things that we've. Have, oh, that's a very good question, Mike. I've got some notes here that uh, uh, some of the uh, more bespoke data sets that we were um, had in the old GAD system, like um, uh, for the, the, the National Dam, for instance, uh, we're not no longer uh, um, uh, delivering through the um, through the uh, the GAD system. Uh, we again, uh, there's we got uh, at GA, we've got the Elvis platform that so you can get, get access to that data, and there's a few sort of uh, specialist sort of the, very thematic um, um, uh, sort of. Uh, Basic products that we're yeah not not delivering to the new GAD system, so we're trying to make it more uh, geophysical data centric. Okay, well, any further questions there for?
for the from the audience. Uh, just bear in mind that you can always give us a call or send us an email if you've got any other questions. But uh, it's probably best that you go out and try it and uh, give us some feedback. But uh, one last uh, option for questions online. I would probably like to add to that. If any, uh, this is again sort of a, sort of a work in pro progress still. Uh, this is basically our uh, first version. We're spending the next uh, basically 12 months sort of uh, uh, continually updating it. So if anyone's got feedback, good or bad, we would like to hear it. So if things don't work or you like different styles of filters, let us, let us know. Okay, and look, another question from Mark, but this is a bit, uh a bit uh, difficult to answer at this stage. How is the data field name standardization going? Uh, slowly. So we were hoping <laughs> to get it done for this uh, release, but yeah, it's a very big, t a big task. But I think that's going to be one of the um, major improvements in uh, delivering geophysical data. It means that uh, uh, it makes it much easier for machine to machine reading the data. Uh, uh, essentially, we could be doing things like gridding on, gridding on the fly. Uh, uh, and yeah, there's more be a huge, I think, a huge improvement. Yeah, and I would just add to that that, um, you know, even for magnetic radiometric surveys, there are about 300 naming uh, names in, in the data sets there. And somehow we've got to reduce that down to a more workable, say, 30 or 40. That's the first cab off the rank is to standardise the names within MAGRAD. But hopefully we can get that standardisation going all the way back to contractors and that we come up with standard names for even, for example, TMI, um, which is not, which you might be surprised is not a standard name across the industry. But anyway, Mark, uh, in answer to your question, yes, we've got a long way to go, but uh, we're starting. Okay, any further questions? Uh, final call. Good. Look, thank you very much. I, I hope you found that very informative. I certainly did. And uh, please start using the new GAD system and give us some feedback. It's all very welcome. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Simon. Good. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.